I met my guests a few years ago and, like many others, said, you have to write a book. It's here. I Sat Where They Sat contains the adventures of Arne and Elsie Bowler from Oshawa. They served as missionaries for half a century in three African countries, and it has been worth the wait. Welcome and hearty congratulations, Arne and Elsie. I have a picture that is just the icing on the cake of your 60th wedding anniversary celebrations. You were married September 27. Look, the man got it too. What year? 52. 1952. And here is some of the fruit of this union. Elsie, I'm going to ask you to just point to your children. Linda Bowler, Catherine Bowler, Philip Bowler, Stephen Bowler, and Valerie. And yeah, the grandchildren. By the way, that was Linda in the middle, dead center. And her son is the eldest grandson. And then Matthias and Amy, David, and Alyssa. 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 Wonderful. And you said five countries mm -hmm. are uh, serving the Lord. The missionary experience was a positive one for mm. your children. Yes. And they blame me for their <laughs> itchy feet. <laughs> They're it, oh, because they can't stay still. <laughs> They're travelers like you two. Yeah. This, the, this book, in my view, is divided into three ideas, three separate stories. First is a prairie story, because your family crossed Saskatchewan in covered wagons, mm -hmm. Arne, when you were just four. Yeah. And then we have the unlikely union here, which I'm coming right back to. And then we have uh, the marriage story, or pardon me, the missionary story. But let's go back to the marriage story because this could be a movie, The Angel and the Church Rascal. How, tell us about your first date, first of all. Well, my, the first date, we had, I had a, um, a high school party and I had to bring a boy. So I saw Arne in the church, so I asked him to come and uh, we met in the church and then I hid in the kitchen because I didn't know what I was supposed to do. And then when he was going to walk me home, I had already gone home. You didn't see your date for the whole evening. <laughs> Once or twice across. Across the room. That's a little unique. Uh, the fact that you were in a church should be celebrated, Arne, because you were some scallywag. <laughs> You know what my theory I, is? Your, your wildness is the very thing God needed to take you into the kind of challenges, dangers, hardships mm -hmm. that would mark so many of the chapters of this book. Am I right? I think right. so. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot in those days on the prairie and in northern Saskatchewan and it helped me in years later. Now, a man we very much love and respect, he's in heaven now. Cal Bombay's dad mm. was a mentor. He and was maybe my pastor. A key to, the, to your rescue spiritually. Yeah. He was very patient with me. <laughs> what did you do to him when he was preaching? Well, he was always a bit long-winded. And I would shake my watch to see if it was going. And then I'd look at it. And finally, it didn't do anything. So I brought a calendar and pulled it out to see what day it was. Oh, in in visit, clear visibility oh, yeah. of the preacher. Yeah. Can you believe it? And he took me aside and told me that was enough. No more. <laughs> <laughs> he ended up being a champion for all that would come. Now, I'll tell you, we didn't have champions of this relationship in your parents, Elsie. No, they were death against it. And um, the people in the church remembered his bad days. But when he became a Christian, he changed. And uh, they just couldn't believe there'd be any change in his lifestyle. So my mother and father had just tried everything to separate us. But we had talked, as when we first met, we both talked about going to the mission field. And um, we both wanted to go, so we felt that was the Lord That's what that brought had brought together. us together. And so we stuck to that through mm. thick and thin. And uh, now 
we're still together after 60 years. The people <laughs> thought she was the church angel. She was a good little girl. Sweet and I was the child. church rascal. <laughs> Tell us about your proposal. Well, after we'd gone together, we went together for almost three years, and her mother fought me all the way. And when she became 18, I asked her to marry me. And she didn't give me a direct answer. Well, tell her how you, tell us how you asked her. I uh, said, do you want a job? Cooking meals, darning socks, looking after a house. And she wasn't too sure. That's a real warm fuzzy. So a couple of weeks later, I came back with another proposal. And I said this, my adoration, my inspiration, my palpitation, Will you become my relation and help me to increase the population of this great nation? And, and she, said, yes. she couldn't resist <laughs> that. And she said, let's give it a try. We're, we're enjoying it. Now, when you came home with the ring, what did your parents say? They wanted me to give it back. Give it back! And that engagement ring was so heavy on my finger because, you know, of the um, attitude of my parents. But it changed but, on the day of the wedding, yes. didn't it? And from that day on, they couldn't do enough to help us. And I was their golden-haired boy. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> it's wonderful. I'm sure this part has already encouraged some parents watching today. Maybe some future in-laws. <laughs> now, Elsie, you said you had missions in your heart, but you were thinking Argentina with beautiful music and no snakes. That's not yes. what God had for you two. No, and um, when we said we're willing to go wherever, it turned out to be Africa. And then um, the first five years, I never saw a snake. But then after that, I think the Lord thought I was ready. <laughs> and uh, we saw many after that, <laughs> in the house and out of the house. <laughs> well, you had more than snakes to deal with. Mm. Arne, you've brought uh, a spear. And this spear has quite a story. To tell. Yes, uh, there was tribal fighting near us. Which at, country? In Kenya. Mm -hmm. Just uh, we lived on the border of three tribes, and they were always fighting a bit. And one day, a man came to my house, and he was oh, so upset. He said, "That tribe to the north of us has come in. They're killing our people. Can you get the police?" So I was going to go and I didn't have a car. She said, I'll be home at four. She wasn't. So I borrowed a car and at four o'clock we left to go to the police eight miles down the road. The, uh, as I le pulled out of the mission station just a half a kilometer from our house, about 30 men, I didn't count them, I didn't stop. They came out of the bushes with bows, with arrows, with clubs and rocks and tried to stop me. And I kept going, and I was almost through them when one man jumped right in front of me and like a javelin thrower, he threw this. And I swung the car, and I heard clunk. And it went into the doorpost beside my head. Here is the and picture. There's a picture of, of it the there. young iron showing exactly where that spear. That was a little Volkswagen <laughs> bug. And it went into the back of the window. And I went on to the police. They got excited and they came and arrested a bunch of people. But the big thing is, a few weeks later, we got a letter from Elsie's father saying, what happened on that day? Uh, he gave me the time and everything. And he was in his work. And at the same time, it was 4 o'clock, 8 o'clock in Oshawa in the morning, uh, so the same time, he w felt he should pray for me, felt a terrific burden. He actually shut down the machinery yes, of General he said, Motors he said, in Oshawa. One machine he worked on and prayed, and then he went to another department and prayed with another man from the church. And uh, when I feel when I was going through those people, he was praying. And when the second buncher uh, prayed, was probably when I was, when I was getting in the car, he was praying, and then they were praying when I was down the road. You have so many illustrations of the power of prayer. Prayer. And encouragement, Bible. almost every chapter, pray for people on the mission field. Yes, the Bible says, before you call, I will answer. 
and it always, God's always there. Before we went to the mission field, we, God said, I'll be with you and watch over you. And we just believed him and he's always been there in all these situations. Hundreds of people, 200 people were arrested following this incident. But there's a sequel to it yeah. that I don't remember ever hearing, which to me makes this even more significant, why God would allow this to happen. Yes. Uh, two, three weeks later, I'm not sure just how long, I was called out in the middle of the night. Someone had been hurt. They said, could I come and help? And I went with policemen. It's all recorded there. But went and we found the man and he'd been shot in the stomach and he was ripped right open. And uh, I tried to help him. I prayed with him. I couldn't talk to him. He was in shock. And I got him to a hospital and I got home at eight in the morning else. He'd been praying for me all night. And uh, he died that day. The man had been shot. But a couple of days later, people in the area were bringing me bananas and chickens and eggs and things. And I said, what's this for? They said, well, we think you are a very good man. That one that was killed that day is the one that threw the spear. And the man that you helped. And they said, when he tried to kill you and then you helped him, we were very impressed. So they brought me all these gifts. The love of Christ, what a witness. Mm. Elsie, you had to deal with not just snakes, a lot of witchcraft, a lot of demon possession, illness in your children. Uh, malaria, not the least of which. What was the biggest challenge for an Oshawa girl going to Kenya, Uganda, and Malawi? Well, beginning to go to Kenya, I was a city girl, and uh, so all these, um, no water, you know, no inside water, and no electricity, and I had to use a cook stove. That I had to learn a lot in a, in a short time. But the Lord has been with us in every you know place we've gone. And I think of that verse in Psalm 23 where it says, He will take you through the valley of the shadow of death. He doesn't leave you in there, but He takes you through. And that's what He does. And then He blesses you. Mm -hmm. the, the title of the book is based on a scripture verse, Arne. Yes. I sat where they sat. Yes, in Ezekiel 3.15, Ezekiel was mm -hmm. sent down to the river Kibar to live with the exiles. I guess he was getting his training as a prophet. And he said, I sat with them. I sat where they sat and I was overcome. I was astonished. And I sat with the Africans and I was astonished, overcome at their poverty, their lack of hope, their, all the problems they had. Well, it's amazing to read what God did through your faithfulness. We just don't have time to tell it. Can you tell this story in a capsule? I'll try. Uh, Isaac Medebo is his name. He's about five years old there. His father was killed by the Amin regime. His wife came. Idi Amin. Idi Amin. His wife had no way of support then. His father was a well-educated man, worked with us and was an interpreter and helped us. And his wife came back to her local church. I went there for a service one day and uh, she was there with four children, I think. There's a picture of them there someplace. And uh, at the time of offering, they always brought their offering and laid it on a table. She brought him up and stood him on the table, uh, little Isaac. And she said, I can't feed them. I don't know what to do. I have four children and I don't know how to look after them. And then she turned and pushed him into my arms and she said, he's yours, Bowler. And I was coming home on leave. I uh, <clears throat> had a few dollars someone had given me to help me on my trip home. And I said, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you enough money to uh, build a little hut for her, mud and sticks, didn't take much. And then the church will have to help her. And they did. They gave her a garden, they built the house, and I found out later that, that she took in more orphans of other people came and kids and children without parents that had been killed. And 
it grew into an orphanage and now it's a primary school. Mm -hmm. And so you see what can happen with a little bit, little as much if God is in it. And this is so, I laughed out loud reading parts of this book, held my breath in other places. It's a great story and it's all true. And if this isn't too charming, you're related to the bowler hat, Mr. Bowler. Yeah. Look at this picture at the bottom. You, father, you could have brought the hat, couldn't you? Today? I have one, I forget, never thought of it. Uh, my father kept telling me that our ancestry back three generations made the bowler hat and I didn't believe him. Someone sent me a page from the London Mirror book and it had a history of the hat. You can get the history on Google now. <laughs> and uh, how it was made by three brothers were commissioned to make a hat for the aristocracy. And in England, that was the hat with a little umbrella. <laughs> they all were. Well, you don't have to be a missionary or an aspiring missionary to be blessed by this mission memoir. One of my teachers at Bible College said, you should read a missionary account every month, one a month. Well, this one will keep you going. I'm so thankful we have it at our e-store. I sat where they sat. Just part of it is a tour through three countries and the marvelous working of God through this couple and some other people we know. Cal Bombay was on your team in, yes. was that Kenya yeah. or Uganda? He worked with me in Kenya in Kenya. the publishing house. Amazing. And Paul Willoughby was with me in Uganda for a while. This is a family yeah. story. <laughs> Congratulations again so much. Uh, we don't get to meet a couple who've been uh, happily married for 60 years very often. Thank you.